members of the community come in here, they see their family members working, they see people doing things that are meaningful, and they are thrilled to be part of it. You know, for me it was a way to be involved in the music scene, create a sense of community, bring people out, meet people, and connect those dots, not only in our local community, but connecting New Brunswick as a community. It's incumbent on us as people in Canada to be able to assist others in the world. Hello, I'm Tom Murphy. Welcome to Land and Sea. Maritimers are known for their generosity and kindness. The ability to thrive in all aspects of life is rooted in our actions towards one another. These are the ties that bind. The port town of Yarmouth is located on the Bay of Fundy in southwestern Nova Scotia. On a side street off Yarmouth's main road is a modest looking building. But behind the facade is a workplace bustling with activity. How you guys doing? Kevin Walker is the executive director of Yakro. It's a non-profit association that runs social enterprises for people with disabilities and adults who face barriers to employment. And we developed three social enterprises, which are Always Us, The Store Next Door, and The Shanty Cafe. I feel proud every day that I come to work. Uh, people have meaningful lives. They have uh, something they can be proud of, and they have a paycheck. All of these things are incredibly important to anybody. It doesn't matter whether you have a disability or whether you don't have a disability. Have trouble getting the paint off your hands at the end of the day? No? It's been quite the ride. <laughs> the goal of a social enterprise is to keep people in their community while improving their social and financial well-being. A decade ago, Yakro started Always Us, a social enterprise that makes soaps and candles. Stacy Fry has worked for Always Us for three years. There's a job for everybody, no matter what ability or disability we have, where everybody feels welcome at Always Us. I've had samples of the products and I think they're awesome um, and that they're really soapy and they're just great product. Always Us flourished, so the store next door became another social enterprise. There, employees create crafts using wood, recycled materials, and hockey sticks. Their products are sold online and in their storefront. There is no limit to the creativity, and sometimes employees' creations turn into big hits. Kevin Ellis, a goalie for the Special Olympics, came up with the idea of a planter made from recycled towels. And a lot of people come and say to me when, when they were made, a lot of people come and say, did you make them planters? I said, yeah. They go, you did a really good job on them. And I, it made me happy, you know. And, and I said, well, hey, if it's, it's something that people like, I'm going to keep doing it. Through their social enterprises, Yakro now employs 70 people many of whom work at the Shanty Cafe, which is beside the store next door. Jean-Paul Camot has worked at the cafe for four years. My job is to work at the cash. I used to have a, a hard time finding a job, and when I found this, it was more secure, and it was more like, okay, I got it, so I don't need to worry too much about a job no more. Social enterprises work best when the community is included, so the cafe purchases their ingredients from the local grocery store. This way, business is kept in Yarmouth and everything at the Shanty Cafe is made fresh daily. The quality of the food is high and the cafe has a steady flow of patrons. I like the interaction with people and the people are great and, and the, the workers are great also to, to work with. And, and just having the atmosphere when I walk in, seeing people happy, it brings, it brings me happy during that day. Community involvement at the cafe is just the beginning. One of the store next door's best sellers is furniture made from hockey sticks. When the products started to sell out faster than they could make them, 
They had to find new ways of getting sticks. We've been pushing to try and, uh, and, and get enough hockey sticks because we really don't. Uh, we're going through them as fast as we get them. At the Yarmouth Mariners Center, donating to the store next door was an easy decision for general manager Gil Dares. You know, they came to us originally and asked us if we had any broken sticks, and when we found out what it was for, uh, you know, we, we just fell in love with the idea. A donation box was placed next to the rink so players can throw their broken sticks into it for the store next door's furniture. It's Canadian all over. It's, it's very unique, um, very well made as well. Get yourself a piece of their furniture. I mean, it's going to be a collector's item, and, uh, and you'll love it. It'll last forever. As well as the rink. There they are. All 16 Maritime yep. Cleves Source for Sports stores donate those. their returned hockey sticks to the program. Good stuff. Once the employees collect the hockey sticks, they get to work. Today, they're building a headboard for a bed. So it's flat enough that you can actually put things on top of it. So not only do you get a headboard to actually have something nice behind you, you can place nice things on it. As long as you don't have an animal to knock it off, of course. The donated sticks are appreciated by employees like Stephen Davidson. He learns new skills while being part of a team that makes one-of-a-kind furniture. One down, who knows, maybe 10 million to go. People learn in different ways. Um, I learn more hands-on, but I'm also able to learn by reading. It's just harder, so you gotta try hands-on, and sometimes some people have a hard time even with the hands-on, so you just have to have patience. But I have fun doing it because I'm doing stuff with my hands. I see people enjoying their jobs, enjoying their life, and enjoying being uh, a contributing member of the community. And this is what inclusion is all about. Hey Jeff, what are you doing today? Uh, just uh, stenciling some stuff for the store. I would love to see this happen in every community across the province. I've seen the difference that uh, the social enterprise makes in the lives of people on a daily basis. I think every community needs this. Coming up on Land and Sea, a historic church brings harmony to its rural community. Yeah, there's a real future here and it's bright and it's fun and it's full of music and joy and neighbors and good times. Dorchester, New Brunswick is a serene village known for its spectacular views of mud flats and salt marshes that extend from the Bay of Fundy. Like most rural areas, communities were anchored around a church, the place where neighbors gathered and relationships flourished. In Dorchester, this place was Shepherdy House, a long-standing church built in 1882. When the church went up for sale, Derek Beardsworth bought it with the idea of bringing live music to the area. The acoustics here are amazing, but it's not only here, it's all these small churches and halls. They were built all out of wood so that somebody could stand up front and, and preach and or talk and everybody at the back could hear them. So you'll have the same mix. It's the design um, that was meant to throw a voice throughout the room, and it works the same way with music. Shepherdy House is a special place for Reg Tower, since he was married in the building. He is thrilled the church has been given a new life as a rural listening hall. The community looks so forward to just being together, getting together, listening to music, have fun. Everything from toddlers to our senior citizens are all in the same place, all having fun together. It just reflects the community. Derek Beardsworth knows the value of community. Well, it's still, it's still your church. It's just a little bit different, right? Well, we're glad you came back.
Patrons are drawn to rural New Brunswick for the intimate musical experience in the 160-seat listening hall. Music has the power to touch you and reach you. It's able to reach people's soul deep and, and really have you know an impact on people. And uh, I think that's pretty important and uh, pretty magical. Every two weeks, world-class musicians like Skinny Lee and Keith Howlett play at Shepherdy House. It's a small, tiny, intimate setting. It's a place where you could come see an artist who you've been listening to for years, and then all of a sudden, they're sitting beside you. Music is something that just automatically brings people together. But it was also something that was really missing in the community. And uh, we want to thank you guys for coming out. It means a lot. You're in for a real treat. There is nobody playing the blues like this gentleman, Keith Allen. Former Dorchester resident Wendy Keats is passionate about revitalizing rural communities. Like a lot of rural communities, Dorchester had lost a lot of its industry and its young people and skilled workers moved away. And a sense of apathy, I think, sets in in a community and just a feeling like you can't change destiny. And when things like this start to happen and people gather and have fun and it starts to feel different. And I think that's what um, Shepherdy House has brought here is this new sense of, yeah, there's a real future here and it's bright and it's fun and it's full of music and joy and neighbors and good times. I think music is one of the most important things for yourself, for your soul. You know, it brings something out from inside. Who doesn't smile when they hear beautiful music? And uh, it's just so apparent here in this room, in this building. So, yes, I think that music is one of the key things in, in life and in a happy life. Connecting people through music is just the beginning for Shepherdy House. We would like to be able to offer it not only as a place to come see music, but a community building. So we just want the community to know that uh, you know we're we're here and and we're all about people. And we couldn't be happier. Uh, you know, I've been to every event that I've been in town. Uh, I've never missed one. I've enjoyed everyone immensely. So I'm really looking forward to what's coming. And you look around and you see, you know, someone with a big smile hitting his buddy. Wow. You know, like really like amazed by what was happening. So when you sit back and, and seeing that it, uh, you know, has had a ripple effect and affected a lot of people. So it's a very nice feeling. Yeah. Coming up on Land and Sea, global efforts are born in a rural maritime community. And I do believe for us as Nova Scotians, we are so blessed. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to go in and do some, some work and help them out there. Black Point is a quaint rural village that overlooks St. Margaret's Bay. It's from this vantage point on his Nova Scotian community that retired plumber Benjamin John was inspired to conceive of a Canadian charity that has a global impact. Several decades ago, John crossed continents to call Black Point home. I was born in South Africa in a little village called Bingo Farm and I was the second last of 10 children. I have seven sisters and three brothers. And growing up in a, in a village with very little running water, um, in fact, there was nothing uh, available for us coming out of a tap. And as far as toilets were concerned, we never had uh, proper plumbing in the toilets as well. So we had to have a pet latrine toilet, and it was located about 400 feet from where our house was or where we lived. And it was a, it was a challenging time, especially for my my mother and my seven sisters to go out, particularly at night, because you're not, you never know what's going to be lurking out there. I saw the, 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 you know, the challenges and the fear in their, on their faces, and I said, I, I've 
got to do something. So I decided to become a plumber and built our first washroom. Um, and this time I, I did it right and I saved a bit of money and I, I made a, a proper uh, brick, a strong structure and it had a proper roof and a, and a door that could lock and, and, it, and it was the first flushable toilet in our village. In 1979, John moved to Botswana where he created a successful plumbing business. And that's where I met uh, my wife in, in uh, 2000 and decided to marry her and then we decided to move to Canada, which is where she's from. From here, yeah, she's a, a local girl born in Tantalan. Shortly after arriving in Canada, John retired from his business to spend time raising their four children. Nonetheless, he wanted to use his plumbing skills for good, so he spearheaded a Canadian charity called Help to Overcome, H2O. And, and what we do is go to Sierra Leone and provide toilets in, in schools, uh, especially for girls who are the same way challenged by poor sanitation and no, no running water. For us as Nova Scotians, we do have that close connection with, with Sierra Leone and that's part of the reason why I wanted to go in and do some, some work and help them out there. Nova Scotia's ties with Sierra Leone date back to 1792 when 1190 black loyalists left Nova Scotia for Freetown, Sierra Leone. So this place that they landed is, is called Freetown and because they were given free land to go and start their, their new lives again. For most parts of the world or developing countries, it's a choice between whether to feed their family or to have a toilet. And they choose to feed their families. John was troubled by this, so despite having a comfortable and fulfilling life in his maritime community, he decided to take action. In 2014, he left for Sierra Leone to build his first block of toilets. This was also prompted by, by my wife, who said that I have to go and use my skills for good. In Freetown, John installed four sinks and four flushable toilets for a school that has 230 students. They had two pit latrine toilets and one was for the one served the teachers and the other one was for the children and it was just in appalling conditions. They would come to school all dressed up and there isn't a toilet to serve their needs. John quickly realized that flushable toilets, though a great start, may not be ideal. Sometimes communities can go for weeks without any source of water. For future installations, he wanted to find the optimal toilet. So we were looking, I was looking for something that was more environmentally friendly and something they don't have to worry about the usage of water. John decided on the Ecoloo. To ensure its durability for Sierra Leone, he installed one for the train station Bike and Bean and Bike Shop which is located 10 minutes from his home, so it is easy for John to check on the toilet. Ecolu is a compostable toilet, and its two-tiered system makes it easy to take care of. Bacteria is poured in once a month to dissolve the solids. The liquid is pumped out into a fertilizer that can be spread over gardens. And this fit was perfect for Sierra Leone because they could now, the community could now benefit from this through the school because they could now create a garden, uh, a vegetable garden to grow vegetables and the children can have nutritional value food and the community, uh, community can benefit from this. John arranges installations from his home office with help from people in Sierra Leone. Hi, Suwane. Yes. Uh, how are you? Good, nice to hear your voice. On his next trip, he will install Ecolu toilets in a school that presently has no washrooms for 320 girls. There are 700 schools in Sierra Leone. 
Help to Overcome wants to install toilets so every child can have adequate sanitation while receiving the education they deserve. And, and I know there are very smart and very intelligent children there. And just like my own children, these children do deserve something better. Um, and given the opportunity, they can excel. Help to Overcome wants to spread their wings to other countries as well. South Sudan is the newest country in the world and they have 95% open defecation. 95%, that's, that's beyond any person's comprehension and I think we need to, I feel like we really need to do something to help them there as well. From his home in his maritime community, Benjamin John remains driven to assist others and to stay true to the ties that bind. And wherever uh, the needs are, wherever people need us to go and, and do, some, do that work, we would uh, do it. And I think, um, it, it's, again, it's incumbent on us as an organization and as people in Canada to be able to assist others in the world. If it's a case of, uh, of peace and security, it's a way of giving people dignity. And, and if it only takes somebody to build one washroom that would create this, I think we should, we, we need to do it. <laughs>